Right then, people, mountain biking is a bit of an art form, isn't it? When you see the pros ride and you think, God, that looks so easy. How do they do it? Sadly, years of honing their craft. But don't worry, there are certain skills that you can improve in a day. And today is your lucky day, because in this video, we are going to see a few of those skills. Right then, peeps, before we get into them, why not give the channel a little bit of love by hitting the old thumbs up button and clicking on subscribe, because it just helps us bring you all the rad content you love to watch. First up on my list of things you can improve in a day is the humble wheelie. Yes, a great skill to have dialed in for both on and off the trail. One, it looks cool in front of your friends. Let's face it, everyone loves a steezy wheelie. And two, there's actually lots of practical applications for being able to pedal and pick the front wheel up at the same time, be it to sprint out of a corner perhaps, or up and over obstacles, or to absolutely navigate your way down a trail. So here's quickly how you do it. Right, here's my quick fire round as to how to pop a wheelie pretty quick. So first up, the ground, find somewhere nice and level or maybe with a slight incline as that's gonna help you pick the front wheel up. If you've got a dropper, I tend to run it roughly about half mast. I'll be in about third or fourth gear. And the trick is, as you crouch into the bike, you wanna stamp down with your lead foot and have a strong follow foot to come through, pulling up at the same time. So as you're down, you'll pedal, and pick the front end up. It's actually a really good way to try it, holding onto a tree like this, because it means you can't really go anywhere, just to practice that stamping and picking the front wheel up. Now, when you do get the hang of that, the key is to cover the back brake also. So once that front end's picked up and you can keep pedaling, cover the back brake to stop you looping out. Trick here then is perseverance and persistence, yes. Practicing all day on this one will pay off by the end of it and you'll be popping those steezy wheelies all the way. Now, once you do have them as well, try and transfer them over onto the trail. Maybe getting up over a log or up a rock or something like that. Just try and put it into a practical mountain bike application. Yes, this one is all about bike setup. So going through your bike, all the different parts here, in a Steve Jones pointy stick fashion and actually making them work as well as they possibly can for you. So if we were thinking about it, let's start at the back. So things like the correct tires for the type of riding that you do. And then when you've got those tires, think of things like pressures or inserts possibly to get the most out of them. And the same when it comes to the brakes. So things like rotor size, how many calipers. Now I'm not saying that you need to go out and buy anything, no way. But just a few adaptations to your bike can make a world of difference. And the place that this is gonna be the most prominent, or two places actually I like to think, is the suspension and cockpit setup. Yeah, the actual fit and setup of your bike. So think about things like compression and rebound. So how quick the suspension comes back and how easily it compresses. If you're finding that your bike is really hard to ride, it's really, it's almost really rough on that bumpy terrain, like the bike's actually making it rougher, then the compression might be too firm. So you need to wind it out a bit and soften those forks up so it absorbs the terrain a lot better. Again, if it's po going back, something like that, or you feel like it's actually making it chattery, you'll need to slow that rebound down. This is something that just doing laps of a certain track in a day can really make a huge difference on. Just playing around and twizzling the knobs and dials. Now, when it comes to cockpit, are you getting arm pump? Are you finding you're a bit stretched? Well, having a simple play around here, relatively cost-free, can make a huge world of difference as well. So things like the, the stem stack height. So all these spaces under the stem there, you can play around with moving them up or down. This could alter depending upon the steepness of the track you ride. And then things like where your brake levers and where your gear levers are sitting. Are you, are you really stretching your thumbs to reach out and, and shift? Same with the dropper post. Again, just moving them slightly more inboard, outboard. Play around, have a little tinkle, you know, just get onto the tracks, try a setting, try a different setting to compare, then go back. Experimentation here is absolutely key, but it can make a huge difference. 
This one then is an absolute gem because you can either improve it on the trail or actually just in a car park or your back garden. Yep, it's cornering. So the basics of cornering, moving the bike around, positioning your body weight on the bike, this is a great thing that can be practiced just with cones or something on the floor and weaving through them, getting used to moving the bike around left to right, leaning it over and shifting your body weight around. That's a great way of understanding and learning the very basics. And then you can take that out onto the trail. Or obviously, if you already know what you're kind of doing there, you know the sort of the basics or the beginnings of how to corner, but things like a section this we have here where it's, you know, it's really loose, it's very gravelly, it's quite a tricky turn. Well, then this is where you can session all day long and really improve and linking up all those motions into one fluid movement. Firstly then, for a really in-depth video on cornering 101, if you like, well, there is one linked in the description down below. Just head on down there, give that a click. But to run through the very basics for you to improve on, you've got the beginning, middle and end of a turn. So at the beginning, I'm gonna be focusing on my braking points where I start to slow down for the turn to avoid trying to brake inside it. And then um, as I come in, I'm gonna be head up looking forwards and I'm gonna be spotting my entrance. And as I'm in the turn, the mid part. I always want to be looking at least three, four, maybe a little bit more meters ahead, depending upon how fast you're going. That way you can assess what you're riding. When I'm in the middle of the turn, that's where I want to focus on technique. So where my body position is, have I dropped my outside foot down? Maybe it's feet flat or feet level, sorry, if you're going around a berm. Where my weight is distributed in the bike as well. I don't want to be too far back and I don't want to be too far forwards head up all the time. And then I wanna be spotting my exit. So coming out of the turn, I wanna be looking at if there are any obstacles in the way, rocks, or we got some roots coming out of this one here. Or is there another turn? So I might need to shift my weight to the other way to link over an into another turn. And by practicing this, I know it does sound an awful lot, but even just, like I said, through cones, just linking things together, looking ahead at the next cone. Well, then you can transfer that out onto the trail real easy. So. Let's sort of give this corner a go and kind of show you guys how it's done. Okay, so coming in, I've already slowing down. I'm looking ahead, keeping my body fairly central and pedals level. I've now switched this look and I'm actually, I'm in the mid to latter part of the turn and I'm looking down here because you see there's all these roots and stuff like that, which I don't really want to get caught up in too much, especially if it was wet. So as I carry on going, I'm then looking ahead and down here, I'm now looking past this tree to be able to link up the next section of trail. Here's what it should look like in real time and slow-mo. So when you are riding through a turn, if you do find yourself covering the brakes or even hovering on them, pulling them ever so slightly, don't be alarmed. This is something that does happen. What I'm trying to say is that if you're doing a lot of your heavy braking, try and do this before the turn and then just slightly modulate your speed in it. It's very rare you actually just go full balls out, let off the brakes and run it through a turn. Right, this next one is an absolute gem and can be learnt literally or improved anywhere. Yes, it is of course the humble bunny hop. You could do it in your garden, you could do it in a car park again like some of the others. You could do it almost within a couple of square meters as long as your bike fits in that place. It can be practiced and is a mega applicable skill to putting out into use on the trails. So I have come to a quiet back road because I thought, hey, this is a good place to practice my bunny hops. It's on an ever such slight gradient, which maybe if you're learning for the first time can help because you don't need to worry about managing your speed as long as you just roll ever so gently. And then really it's just practicing the motions of going through a bunny hop to then take it to the trails perhaps. So here is briefly how you do a bunny hop. 
So when it comes to learning bunny hops, I should say that actually if you learn on flat pedals, you'll develop the correct technique a lot better than if you're on clips because you almost become reliant upon your feet being attached. I've got clips on my bike, but I'm gonna unclip and actually just put my feet flat on there and show you the correct way. Here we go. So what is that motion to get those bunnies hopping? Well, you, as you're rolling along at a fairly steady speed, you don't need to be going too quick here, you're gonna squat with your arms and your legs down into the bike. Your body weight will be fairly central in the bike. As you then explode up, you'll actually almost come diagonally back, picking the front end of the bike up. When your body's at the highest point, you'll then pick the front end of the bike up. And to get the back up, because obviously you'll be in almost a wheelie type position at this point, you're gonna scoop back and down with your feet. So pointing your toes down, pushing into the pedals, gripping, and that will scoop up the back end, leveling it out in the air. You can break this down into certain sections then. So actually you can do the front half of the bike first. So as you're riding along, just get used to popping into the bike and exploding up out of it, just lifting the front end up and the same. Just get used to scooping with your heels and shifting your body weight forwards. What that's gonna do is that's the picking up of the back end part. When you combine these two together, you know, exploding up, out, backwards, and then shifting your body weight forwards, scooping with your feet, that is when all the motions will come together nice and smoothly, and you can dial in those bunny hops. Yikes, for this next one, we're gonna be talking all things drops and the weather. It's closing in on us here in Finale, so let's get cracking. Now, a drop is a drop regardless of its size. So whether it's a very small drop like this in the trail, that's probably only a foot tall from the, from the wood to the floor, or you're tackling six foot, 10 foot monster drops. We're gonna look at just how to do them real quick and then how you can practice them in the course of the day or out on the trail, just stopping and sectioning something like this. So let's take a look at how I hit this drop. Cue the slow-mo. So in essence then, drops are all about extending your arms and shifting your body weight back. So you can see on the entrance to this, I crouch down into the bike, much like I would a bunny hop. And then what I do is almost the beginning part of a bunny hop. So I shift my butt back and over the saddle to get my weight back, extending my arms. Now this makes the front end nice and light. So with that, it brings it up so that when you take off the drop, that your wheels will stay nice and level and you'll nicely land off of it. Now, if you're doing slightly larger drops than this one here, this is more beginner. And I would say for beginners, this is great because if you do not quite get the hang of this to begin with the technique and the timing, well then if your front wheel drops, you're not gonna clip your chain ring or go over the bars or anything dangerous like that. If you're on bigger drops, if you're more advanced drops, well then you then start to need to shift your body weight more central into the bike to nose dive in ever so slightly so that your wheels will match the angle of the landing that you're going for. There we have it then, some great skills that you can brush up on in a day and really take your mountain biking to the next level. Are there any skills that you need to brush up on? Well, if there are, let me know in the comments down below and we'll maybe we'll do a video on them if we haven't already. But for me, for now, I'm out of here. Thanks very much for watching everybody and I'll catch you later.